Is this you or someone you love? You would like to make a mini map in Unity, but there's a problem. But in order to create a mini map, we need a second camera. Now let's make our mini map Adding camera. Our second camera. I know what you're thinking. I don't want to render my entire scene twice. I'd like a sandwich, but I don't feel like eating two whole loaves of bread. Top. How do you make the good stuff like this and this? How do you make stylized maps like Middle Earth or Elder Scrolls? Well, I'm here to tell you that I've figured out the secret sauce and a new way to think about minimaps in Unity. To start making this magic, we're going to need a reference image. The best way to do this is go to your scene view, click on isometric mode, and view your terrain from the top. Now you can simply just take a screenshot and import it into Photopea. You could simply just use this image as your minimap, but I like to use stylized maps. Let's stop and talk about how we're actually going to get this biscuit. The minimap is simply going to be a UI image, an image that we will move relative to its parent. Here, we can visualize the parent as this semi-transparent circle. To zoom the minimap in and out, we can simply scale the image up and down. Now, when we apply the UI mask to our parent, we have our basis for our minimap. What we need to do now is to come up with a way to transform our world space position to our new minimap position. To get started, let's talk about our world space. I'm going to use this image as a reference to our actual world. Here, my world is 250 by 250, with the origin at the bottom left. It's important to note here that while I'm using Unity Terrain, it doesn't matter what you use, you just need to know the size of your world. Let's bring the minimap back in. Here, our minimap texture is going to be 600 by 600 with the origin in the middle. When we think about converting from one coordinate system to another, naturally we think about transformation matrices. Just like how we use the MVP matrices to get from local space to screen space, we're going to use a matrix to get from world space to minimap space. We need to know three things when we're building our matrix, our translation, our rotation, and our scale. To gain some intuition on how we're going to calculate these values, let's think about moving our player in world space up and to the right. Looking at our player in map space, it is clear that first, we need to translate the origin to match our world space origin. This value is simply half the height and width of our map. Since one unit of movement in our much smaller world space is not the same as one unit in map space, we need to calculate the scale. This is simply our map size divided by our world size. Let's try that again now that we have the proper scaling. And there you have it, Bob's your uncle. To set up our minimap in our project, we're going to use a scroll view. To keep our player centered, we're going to translate our minimap's anchored position to the opposite of what our player's anchored position is. Since we scale our minimap to zoom in, we have to multiply our player position by this scale as well. The rest of the project setup is very easy. We'll add a minimap world object script to every object in the world that needs to show up on the minimap. On start, we'll register with the minimap controller and create an icon on the minimap. Now let's go over our update function. For each icon, we're going to convert our world position to our map position using our transformation matrix. To have our map icons face the same direction of our world objects, we will use the Y rotation of our world objects and rotate our icon about the Z axis. We negate the rotation as the up vectors point in opposite directions. Finally, to keep our icons the same size as we zoom, we need to scale them by the inverse of our map scale. And that's it! 
we have successfully created a mini-map without using a second camera. If you enjoyed this video, cool.